Well, we look forward to harness racing starting in the north, and we do have a meeting at Cambridge on Sunday, the 31st of May. And to help us go through all the races there is the caller at Cambridge in Aaron White. Uh, Aaron, a good morning to you, and can't wait for it to start here in the North Island. Yeah, very good morning to you too, uh, BP. Really looking forward to getting harness racing up and going again in the North Island. Nine races at Cambridge uh, here, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. A few betting opportunities there for us. Uh, of course, the uh, workouts have been going for the last couple of weeks, and a couple of horses through the workouts that we'll go through that have been performing well that I think are big chances throughout the card. Yeah, they look like good form references, don't they? Both those pookie workouts and, and even the, the couple of workouts we've seen at Cambridge, which have been posted online, those videos, which is always a key element to trying to help the punt if you can actually see it as well. Yeah, if we can get as much of that information online, that's what it's all about, and especially those Cambridge workouts now because it's uh, very important to see which horses are fit at this stage, ready to go to the races, and the ones that might just putter out over the last 100 metres. All right, well, let's go to the first race, Aaron. This is a check out the new Clubhouse menu mobile pace over 1,700 metres, and it is uh, for uh, the amateur drivers, uh, a race where Mariana Bromack has got the form from Michael House's barn. How did you see the first race of the day? I went to the second row, he damn fast over the 1,700 metres. He didn't get any luck at all at his last start at Cambridge back on the 19th of March. And I thought Bruce Hadley had a good chance here for Adrian Matthews to kick off uh, the coming out of lockdown with a good win for us with he damn fast. So we'll go that way. Yeah, Mariana Bromax got the form on the board uh, to be driven by Neil Munro. We'll go forward, likely speed in the race. Uh, put in the nine Vespa when it comes to the amateur drivers' races at Cambridge. You can't leave out the Tim Vince uh, trained horses especially with uh, Cheryl Wig in the uh, sulky. And the four, the Batmobile was good for Frank Phelan last time we saw them out on the track in an amateur driver's race just prior uh, to the lockdown. 10, 5, 9 and 4 in the opener. Starts at 17 minutes past 12, race number one. We move on to race number two of the day, and this does kick off the early quaddy as well. This is the Black Dog Furniture Shop local mobile pace over 2,200 metres. This is one race where we do see a little bit of workout form around a couple of runners. So how would you break it down? Oh, and the uh, three boarding call on top, a uh, uh, first starter for uh, Steve Telfer, Zachary Butcher, to do the driving there, an American ideal filly. Uh, she has been going well at the workouts, and I just thought with the nice draw here today, we know the Telfer horses have been moving around uh, through the lockdown, of course, being trained on a private property. They couldn't be fast work, but they could be jog, so they're going to have that little bit of fitness edge on their side. You'd imagine those Telfer horses, those horses that are coming from those private properties. So I'm going to go that way on top. Uh, one greatest showman's got the nice draw to be there, Morris McHenry. The nine Manhattan Sunshine first up for Murray Gibbs. Should get a nice run through from the second line too, I thought, Manhattan Sunshine. So she's a good each-way play in the race. And the five Bodrum Boy. Now, this is one that's come out of those Cambridge workouts. If you can look at those workouts uh, online, he was very good in both of his workout wins and has to be included in the mix here, Sean McCaffrey. 3-1, 9 and 5 for me. Let's move on to race number three now. And this is the Marsh Equine and Livestock Insurance Mobile Pace over 1,700 metres. Quite like this race, actually, Aaron, because he looks to be a little bit of speed off, off the arm on a few runners on the front line. There's a bit of workout form around a couple of horses on the second line as well. So uh, intriguing race this one for the junior drivers. Yeah, it certainly is. I'm going to go with Lagatha. Just with it being over the one and three quarter laps of 1,700 metres, she's got the right draw. Craig Smith is going to be doing the driving on her. So I do like her chances uh, here in the third on the card. To the second line, Pembroke Charlie. He'll be working home strongly in the race. Dylan Ferguson, we know he's one of our leading juniors up here in the North Island. So he's going to be well in the mix. The nine, Olivia Rachel. Well, she's in there on consistency alone. A bit of a concern with that inside of the second row draw, but she's got to be in all your combination uh, permutations. And the five, Diamonds are better. Frank uh, Cooney and uh, Tate Hopkins, we know what their strike rate's like at Cambridge Raceway when they come south of the bomb base from their uh, northwest Auckland base. We know we've got to have them somewhere in the mix, so Diamonds are better does get a run for me, especially over the 1,700 metres. I think she'll enjoy that trip as well. Four, ten, nine, and 5. Nice one. Yeah, I like your thoughts here around the 9 and the 10 there. I thought they were good workout chances uh, from not recently and, and can, can play a big part of these things that happen up front for those two horses. Right, let's move on to race number four now. This is the Farmlands Mobile Pace over 2,200 metres. Uh, Whiskey Neat was very a good workout winner on the 22nd of May. Zachary Butcher, trainer, driver. Uh, what did you like in the race, though, Aaron? I went the way of the five Johnson step here. Now, he has won a couple of workouts at Pukekohe over the uh, weeks leading up to uh, this return today. And I just thought from his draw, 
And the way he's been going at the workouts, he's come home in some nice sectionals. He has put together a couple of good races at Alexandra Park in the past as well. So make him a nice little bit of a value play, uh, Johnson Step, Jay Avanathy, to do the uh, driving there. The one, Hawthorne and Hunk's got the right draw to be prominent throughout for Peter Fergus and the nine whiskey need, as you mentioned. The trial form around that is very good. Zachary Butcher should be hugging the markers throughout and working home strongly. And the 10 Doc Holidays in the mix there. Has been mixing his form. He's a nice type, of course, been uh, out of first Western. So, uh, of course, he is the uh, full brother to the Oaks winner in uh, Best Western, uh, Benjamin Butcher, to do the driving there. Five, one, nine, and 10 for me. That'll open the uh, place six on the card. Let's move on to race number five now, Aaron. This is the gavelhouse.com mobile pace over 2,200 metres. Uh, sit down to start at 157. There's interest in this race around a horse who's got a form line of 0-0-8-0-0. First start for Steve Telford by the name of Silk because it's looked very good in forward and two recent workout wins at Pukekohe. What's your thoughts on that runner? Yeah, it certainly has, and I, I've, I've got it on top, and I've, I've got it on top because we know she has been working over, as we mentioned just prior, that uh, with Steve's barn being a private property, he's been able to jog these horses up, so they probably do have that touch of fitness over most of the rivals. Well, this mare, two workout wins. Uh, the first one, she came home in 56.8, 27.1. The second, she came home in 58.7 and 27.7, both on decent mile rates as well, mm. so... Uh, I just think on those two workout wins, we're going to give her a chance. Zero, zero, eight, zero, zero. <laughs> Top pick. That's for me, Benjamin Butcher. Put in the 11 Akarada Prince. He should be finding the line well. Uh, Fergus Schumacher. Uh, the four uh, better be betters in the mix there. Another one of the Frank Cooney, Tate Hopkins uh, trained runners, Morris McKendry. And the five jive, Scotty Dixon, David Butcher. I think Scotty might be in for a day too. Uh, throughout this card. So if you're taking those combination bets, the Quinellis Trifectas, First Fours, anything you see from the Scott Dixon Huntable Barn have to be in those combination uh, permutations. All right, let's move on to race number six now. This is the Happy 40th. Uh, Glenn Wallace handicap trot over 2,200 metres. The back marker in Delson was in very good form, sort of pre-lockdown is off the 40 metres. Uh, how'd you see this one? Tricky race, 2,200 metres and a 40-metre back marker. It's very, very hard to win from back there. I'm going to go for a very consistent horse that was racing well prior to the lockdown, and that's Recycle. Andre Potama for Pukikawa trainer Steve Green. I think Recycle can go one better than it did at Alexandra Park back on the 20th of March. It has got the front. Now, this horse does like to roll along on top as well. So if Andre can step Recycle off the mark, and if he goes around in this race and trots a... Uh, 250, let's go, 258. Del Sun, mm. it's going to take a very, very good Del Sun fresh up. You know, you've got to remember that these horses haven't raced for eight weeks and he's coming off 40 metres. It's going to have to take a very, very good Del Sun to run him down. So I've gone the four recycle, put in the nine bar room brawl. You've always got to respect the Dickey runners when they come south of the Bombays. 11 Zebek starting to find that form that uh, secured that uh, New South Wales trotting derby last season, Zachary Butcher. And you're going to put uh, Del Sun in the mix, but uh, it's just on his ability that I've got him there. But 40 metres over the 2,200 metres, very, very tough. If he wins, it'll be a per- uh, wonderful performance, that's for sure. So 4, 9, 11 and 13. Let's move on now to race number seven. This is the Dunstan Horse Feeds Mobile Pace over 2,200 metres. Set down to start at 12 minutes to three, and there's been a horse here at the bottom of the book that's been good at the workouts. Uh, and Kelly's delight for the, the Dickey team. Lone Range has been in that same workout as well. Uh, Louis the Horse, I thought, was good in a workout at Cambridge recently, so not, not the worst field coming up here, race number seven. I've always had a lot of time for Louis the Horse as well, for Andrew and Lynn Neal. Todd Mitchell will do the driving, was a lovely winner, uh, back on uh, Christmas Eve at Cambridge Raceway. He's got barrier three. As you mentioned, that workout looked okay, and he'll only come uh, through that workout better and fitter. So he's got the draw to be a major player. Yeah, Kelly's delights well in the mix, Joshua Dick. He does like uh, racing at Cambridge. Has won two of seven there at Cambridge, being placed in another couple. So uh, she's well in the mix. Kelly's delight. The four, he's a ladies' man. Now, he was racing really well at Alexandra Park, the source for uh, Cherie Wig, Tony Cameron to do the driving. In slightly better company as well. Went round against uh, Flying Steps uh, last time. South Coast Arden two starts ago. So his form is good. And coming back to Cambridge after Alexandra Park form, we know we've got to have those horses uh, in there. And my value bet of the day is number two, Bugger Lugs. He was racing really well prior to the uh, lockdown. Uh, from his handy draw, he's going to be there or thereabouts. And he's been racing his, uh, running out his races really, really well. 
Peter Ferguson for Chris Webber. So 3, 10, 4 and 2 for me. An intriguing battle, the seventh on the card. Mm, it certainly is. All right. Well, let's move on to race number eight now, Aaron. Uh, this is the bit of it uh, premium natural solutions mobile pace over 2,200 metres. Again, uh, some workout form around the likes of the former Southern and Franco Wright, who was good uh, recently out of the Pukekohe workouts. How did you see this one the eighth of the day? I went the way of the three Lavazza. I did make her my bet of the day. The Terra to Love Philly for uh, Scotty Dixon, David Butcher to do the driving. She's had two runs previous at Cambridge, been placed in both of those. And Comes up with a nice draw uh, over the 2,200 metres. So I, I will make her my bet of the day uh, here for the meeting. The two, the blue beat, Jay Abernathy for uh, Adrian Matthews. Comes up with the right draw to be in the right place throughout. Put in the four, Franco Wright. He does come north now to Abs uh, hold away. Andre Potama doing the driving, as you mentioned. A really nice workout win at Pukekohe recently. So got to watch that horse because I think um, he might be a little money spinner up here in the North Franco riot. And the eight, uh, 18 carat James Stormont for Frank Cooney, Tate Hopkins. The scratching of Linton Creek sees her come into barrier seven. Got to remember this horse went around against Amazing Dream, albeit beaten uh, 30 lengths last time, but has taken on some very, very good three-year-old company. 18 carat, don't let her get under your guard. Three to beat two, four and eight. And the last race of the day, it is a book event high furniture at Cambridge Handicap Trot over 2,200 metres. How did you see the uh, Trotters fighting this one out? Well, I had to go for the four Chinsky here, uh, BP. If I didn't uh, put this horse on top, all my friends would think I've gone through lockdown and I haven't come out so well the other side because <laughs> I've been a Chinsky fan. So we've got we've got to carry on with that theme. The eight, little bit of love. I thought its last start was good, Jay Abadathy. Uh, put in the uh, six there to Manchester on fire. He's got a good record around Cambridge Raceway for Michelle and Bernie. Todd Mitchell will do the driving there. And the one, Christofferson, a first starter for uh, the Dickies. Joshua to do the driving there. Pegasus Burr Gelding out of Bonton Cherie. So that's been a very good trotting family uh, over the years. So four, eight, six and one to wrap up the day. All right, Aaron, uh, your best bet and value bet for the meeting. Uh, best bet, well, we are with Lavazza, Scotty Dixon's uh, Terra to Love Philly there in uh, race number eight. I just thought uh, her runs at Cambridge had been good. You've got David Butcher on board. And uh, the one for value comes in race number seven, number two, Bugger Lugs there for uh, Raglan trainer Chris Weber. His form prior to the lockdown was very, very good. And I think he's worth a few dollars. And especially if you're taking those Quinella trifecta first four bets, he's the one that's going to rise those prices up for us. Nice one. As always, thanks for your time, Aaron, and a good calling. I'm sure you're looking forward to getting back in the combox. Certainly am. Certainly am. It's been a long time.